Does what you think about reflect the word? You need to think about that. The Bible says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are of a good report, is the thoughts and the things that you talk about, does it reflect the word? And when you're reflecting the word, see, sometimes we get all worried about, how am I ever going to present Jesus to people? When you begin to reflect God, when you begin to reflect God's word, when you begin to reflect the word of God in your life, it will change people's life. I was driving by and I see at the panorama now the Bible that we as a church used to sponsor and we used to set it up. I remember when we first were setting that up and it was quite labor intensive and we had to store it and all that kind of stuff. So we don't do that now. But when we did... There were people that were, I remember the board was telling me that, well, they kind of want to move it around. They don't want it quite as visible because it's the Word of God. And it's imparting, you know, Christian views on people. There was people that complained. Of course, society going, well, you shouldn't be able to have, you know, Christ right out there because people need to make their own choice. And da 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 You know how the world is, right? So anyway, nevertheless, so we kind of got stuck in the corner for the last few years. And then... Um, you know, we thought, that's okay, they'll just slowly move it around. And you know what, I believe for the last two years, if not for sure this year, it's right out there on the road. And matter of fact, there's many things talking about Christ and Christianity right at the road. Well, you know what, God's ways are higher than our ways. God is going to begin to, you know, not only is he sitting on the throne, but he's forever, he's got the, us there with him. And the things that the enemy in the world is trying to kind of poo-poo and take away, Jesus is going to be lifted higher. And the word says when he's lifted higher, he'll draw all men unto himself. Amen. Now, the grace of God shows up when we think as God thinks. Amen. See, sometimes you can get so caught up in your works. I got to do this, and I got to do that. And if I don't do this right, then that's not going to happen. You know, it's interesting. Carly was mentioning to me to, this morning about, you know, some people really beating people up about if you don't get to church two times on a Sunday, you're in real trouble. Spiritually, you are in real trouble. Well, then we're all in trouble. Okay. So, But you see, the point is this. That's not what makes you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is when you let Jesus move into your life and change your heart. What makes you a Christian is when you accept that free gift of salvation. So the grace of God shows up when we think as God thinks. Set your mind on the higher things. When we become Christ-occupied, we will move in His purpose. The Bible says, in Him we live and move and have our being. You're a human being. And so if you're in Christ, you really need to look at that because the next time you begin to view yourself as being in Christ, the next time the enemy shows up with a bag of tricks or something that you should take, you'll say, That's, Jesus wouldn't have any part of that. Infection, Jesus wouldn't have any part of that. Amen. Poverty, Jesus wouldn't have any part of that. Death, Jesus wouldn't have any part of that. Depression, Jesus wouldn't have any part of that. Sickness and unhealth or, you know, unable to pay your bill, Jesus wouldn't have any part of that. So you need to begin to go it over into grace and say, God, your ways are higher than my ways. And Lord, show me areas that I can improve. Show me areas that I can come up to the higher level of what God has for me. Your mentality needs to become your mindset. You're going to have to take authority. Amen. You're going to have to. You know, the Bible says, set your mind. Now, I want you to notice that there, and I have a hard time with this because I've really, really, really had a hard time with my mind, okay? Not, not in an impure way, but just trying to kind of get through what we're getting through. Um, but, but the Bible says to set your mind. Set your mind, just like that thermostat, not a thermometer. Set your mind on things above. Set it. It didn't say God was going to set it. It didn't say Jesus was going to set it. It said set your mind. So you got to do that. We don't like to do that. Sometimes it's a lot easier just to say, well, God, you're just, you're just going to do whatever you're going to do. You know, everybody, you know, and, and it's interesting um, whenever you, you hear people say, you know, um, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, you know. And so really the, the onus is on nothing on you, just kind of course through life. And if it happens, it happens to happen. Well, that's, that actually is kind of easier. <laughs> but that's not what the Word says, right? Because... Not everything in your life is supposed to happen the way it does. Amen. The enemy can get in and he can steal and he can steal and he can kill and he can destroy. But Jesus has come to bring us life. So verse 2 it says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. The old nature, the old person is done away with. There is a new life, a new person that's hidden in Jesus. But you got if you went away with any nugget today, is you've got to set your mind. It's no different than choosing to forgive. 
It's no different than choosing to say, I'm going to choose to forgive somebody. Those feelings, you know, the worst thing in the world is when people say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Because that doesn't work that way. When you, you know, it's just like saying, well, I'll forgive when I feel better. Well, you will never forgive them. You've got to choose to forgive. And when you choose to forgive and you set your mind higher, then you've actually set your thermostat to say, I am choosing to forgive. And in those days when you go, man, I don't feel like forgiving today, I've chosen to forgive. And those days when you're high and go, man, I feel great, I sure can forgive. Know that there's an enemy that's going to try and bring you a little lower the next day and go, oh, I don't know if I can forgive. But if you've set your thermostat, you can forgive. And before long, you're acclimatized. You know, how do you acclimatize? I can remember years ago uh, when we, when, uh, we farmed and, and Dad and I would go out and, and, and do chores. Um, he said to me one day, well, we're going to have like a spring thaw. It was in like January. We were used to like minus 20 and go out feed calves and carry on. And, and, uh, and so I, I never realized what he was saying, but I'm thinking a spring thaw. He says, yeah, it's going to feel like t-shirt weather. I'm thinking, are you kidding me? It's going to be like you know, I don't know, minus one or zero or something, right? And, and so technically it was still cold. But boy, did it feel great. It felt warm. I knew it was t-shirt weather. I mean, it's like you could run out to your car in your boxer shorts and not freeze. I mean, it's okay. It's, you, so what I'm trying to get at is this. You begin to acclimatize yourself to something to where we go, how come it's okay? We're okay with weather like this. I mean, if you were to say in July it's like this, you'd say, oh, it's so cold. But you begin to acclimatize yourself. And when you go from really, really cold to zero degrees, you go, man, it's really warm. This is so doable, I could do this all year long, and yet it's still cold. So you begin to acclimatize yourself so that every time the enemy throws something at you, you've acclimatized yourself to set your thermostat at the higher level and say, you know what? It may be a bit of a bump in the road. It may be a bit of a sad day. It may be a bit of a rainy season. The sun may be high a little bit. There might be some clouds in the sky, but my thermostat is set in higher ways, and I move forward. And so success is based on right thinking. Failure is based on wrong thinking. What can be a failure in your life? Did God really say? Does God really want to help you? Does God really want to answer your prayers? Go with me to Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Bible says, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is. You really got to begin to look at that. Right? The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay? But it goes from your mind and into your heart. That's why you got to catch what's going into your mind, because into your mind affects your heart. Okay? So we need to become aware. All right? We need to become aware that our thinking does affect our heart. Go with me to Philippians 4.8. Philippians 4.8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are of uh, are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report. If there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. You know what? You're going to have far more opportunity to do the opposite of that. Right? Oh, the influenza is just it's traveling everywhere. You know? Boy, I'll tell you what. These gas prices are going to go so high in the spring, we're never going to be able to drive. I mean, there's going to be all kinds of things that you're going to hear and think, and it's actually easier to gravitate towards the negative than it is the positive. Okay? But it says here, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things. Remember we said earlier to set your mind, just like that thermostat. Set that thermostat. Set your mind on things that are above. Set your mind on what the Word says is yours. And be open to change some of your thinking. 
I can remember years ago we had a Bible study and someone that was there was totally against praying in the Spirit. They were against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I remember with Sherry and I, we even had a discussion. It was like, we're just going to let the Lord work it out. And so the Lord just really began to just move and soften the hearts. And isn't it the Word that goes forward and does the work? Amen. You just need to present the Word. Amen. It wasn't up to us to choke hold them. I never noticed Sherry, you know, diving off the couch, strangling them, saying, you're going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. It never happened. That's not how it works. We allow God to do his work. We allow God to will and to do his good pleasure. But he does say here, if you're setting your mind on something, set it on the things that are lovely and of a good report. Hang around with people that are of a good report. Right? Even on my little Facebook account, if you could check on who I got on there. But there's things like John Maxwell, and I love John Hagee, and, 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 and sometimes need a little bit of 60 seconds of T.D. Jakes, and things like that. Something that will build you up. Something, Jesse DePlanis, something that will just encourage you and move you forward and begin to give you a word for the day, or something that's just going to begin to put a little spark in your day and say, that is my testimony. That is lovely. That is of a good report. And begin to say, that is mine. And that's what you need to do. And that's when you begin to do that, it will move you forward into the things of God. When you find your mind drifting, steer it back to the Word. All right? When you find your mind drifting, last week, it was funny, uh, the girls, we were, I, what we, we were watching, maybe it was a Christmas show, and then I said, I just need a half an hour of raw parsley. And so I put it on there, and, and the girls and I were watching it. And so um, there was a guy there, he was reenacting uh, The Widow with the widow's son, she had the oil and the stick, I remember baking a cake, and so one of the guys were laying on the floor, and so the girls couldn't get over, Dad, why is there a guy looking like he's dead laying on the floor? <laughs> Carly's like, if somebody turned that on, I don't think he's weird. I said, well, we've got to watch the whole thing. And so when we watched the whole thing, it was, you know, he, he was preaching and, and, and just sort of using an analogy the way he was. But for me, I needed that half an hour to build myself up. When you find that your life is sort of maybe not, maybe it's, don't let it crumble. But when you find you need that opportunity to build yourself up, find the word, find the scripture, find the, 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 the CD with the praise on it. Something that can begin to build you up and to shore you up and to strengthen you and say, that's just, just exactly what I needed. Amen? That's just exactly what I needed. And it's interesting when you begin to do that. And so, you know, it was just probably, we probably only watched maybe 8 to 10 minutes of what we needed. And praise the Lord, we'll put our Christmas show back on. But something exciting, you know. <laughs> Surround yourself with people that are exciting. Surround yourself with the word that's exciting. You know, if you're just going to hang around people that are always, you know, sort of low-level living, it's never going to work. Eeyore, you know, can't work out, doesn't work. It's cloudy today. It's raining all the time. We're never going to get anywhere. You're, what you're happening is you're actually becoming that thermostat, and you'll drop down to zero. Thermometer, sorry. You'll drop down to zero. Set your thermostat at where you need to be. 